This is the Earth Science Classroom. Welcome back to the channel. This video is in the Astronomy Playlist. Today we're looking at a process or phenomena called retrograde motion. This is to do with planetary motion and the apparent movement of planets according to what we see on Earth. And this movement of planets was seen by ancient Egyptians and was evident throughout history or the development of astronomy up until the scientific revolution, which correctly explained how this phenomena actually exists. So join me now. So planetary motion and retrograde motion have been around since the Egyptian Empire. Now what this is, is Mars moving across the night sky against the stationary stars. And these ancient societies and, and people were witnessing planets moving across the night sky over a course of time. And they witnessed a strange movement that occurred with Mars in particular, because it's the closest planet we could see doing this phenomena. And the Egyptians noticed it and they put down their hieroglyphics. And then we came to the ancient Greeks. So looking at between 600 BC to about 200 AD. So that 800 years of the Greeks being amazing and pushing all this different and new ideas about the world and our universe and how it works. So ancient Greeks are known as the golden age of astronomy. And people like uh, Miletus in 611 BC or Pythagoras who developed the, uh, the, the laws of mathematics and looked at the theorem which also looked at spheres and how the planets and everything moving around is in perfect spheres. Then you got Aristotle, which was 384 BC, looking at the uniform circular motion of planets and discussed this retrograde motion as a way to explain how the planets moved. Then came Plato, or Plato came uh, 420 BC, and, and then Aristotle was one of his students. But Plato, again, was discussing the heavens and everything around the heavens, planets had a circular motion. Then we developed into Aristarchus, who proposed a different model but wasn't really accepted. But the geocentric model has been around for 600 BC, and that was saying that the Earth is in the middle. And it wasn't until a lot longer, until uh, t uh, Ptolemy in 150 AD, 150 AD, that there was a development of this geocentric model with more detail, and that epicycles, which is both the different and the epicycle itself, was introduced by Hipparchus in 165 AD, and then 150 AD was Ptolemy, who made a next advancement, uh, introducing what's called an uh, equant, which was using the epicycles to estimate uh, planetary motion, in addition to how fast these objects are moving around the Earth. So there was a progressive development of understanding through the Greek society from ancient Greek to more modern Greek, whereby these very smart mathematicians, philosophers, and astronomers would develop the model going through the years to get a more advanced understanding of how the heavens or space worked. And it ended up with Ptolemaic system whereby the Earth is in the center and you have all these 40 different epicycles to explain the movements of the planets. Now, they saw retrograde motion in action with Mars, but they use these epicycles to try and figure it out. So it wasn't until the Copernican Revolution, or the theory that Copernicus put forward in 1473 to 1543, now he actually published his new model theory putting the sun in the center of our moving planetary objects as opposed to the geocentric model that put the earth in the center and all these epicycles would, would be used to figure out the motion of planets however when you put the sun in the middle everything seemed to work out logically mathematically and with good reason so copernicus was or published this model theory on his deathbed in 1543 because of the fear of the Catholic Church any kind of retribution and being called a heretic and being uh, feared for his life as other people were like Galileo and so forth. So the, this is called the heliocentric model and this enabled uh, astronomers and scientists to accurately explain now what's going on with this retrograde motion. Now Mars is the next planet that is further away from the sun. So you put the sun in the middle and you accurately understand the motion of planets 
Earth, which we're on, is the third planet from the Sun. We are terrestrial, and the last terrestrial planet, which is Mars, is the fur further out spot. And the orbital period for Earth is 365 days, but 0.25 we get the leap year. And Mars is further out, a longer distance to orbit around the Sun, so therefore it takes longer to orbit. So it's going to the same speed as the Earth in terms of velocity around the Sun on the revolution, but it's further away and longer distance. So looking at 687 days, Earth days, for Mars to make one complete revolution or one orbit or one year on Mars is nearly double that of Earth. So we're looking at this, looking at speed, purely the speed and how fast our uh, Earth and Mars orbit the Sun, and that will give us a understanding of what this retrograde motion is. So retro means backward, basically, or, or going backwards, and grade means progression. So it's a backward progression of this of this planet Mars that people saw throughout the year or throughout a period of years, and they could explain it. So the, the, the Egyptians and Greeks they use their models and geocentric model and the epicycles to explain this, but then the heliocentric model with the sun in the middle made it easy to understand and explain. So perspective is on Earth looking at Mars from Earth. And the apparent motion is it's visible. Apparent means that it's, it's clearly seen by the human eye through a telescope or just from the eye looking at Mars and, and how Mars moves. So we have this backwards motion of Mars because of the Mars taking longer to orbit and Earth being quicker to orbit and move around the sun. So as we're on Earth, looking at Mars and how Mars moves across the night sky every day, every month, every year. This retrograde motion happens every 2.135 Earth years, which is 27 months. Now, Mars moves in a retrograde motion for around 10 weeks. Now, that can change the, the time of year on Earth, but it's a 10-week period. Now, Mars would happen, would go through about two and a half months, whereby it would be moving in a direct motion. So from from the west towards the east in the night sky. And Mars would move and travel towards the east, but during that 10 week period, every 2.1 years, Earth years, we would see Mars do something strange. It would actually appear from the Earth to move backwards for a period of 10 weeks. And then after that 10 weeks, it would continue to move in a direct motion towards the east. But that is a 10-week loop of Mars going in a different direction. Now, this baffled people from Egypt, people from ancient Greece, and obviously still baffled people in modern astronomy, but putting the sun in the center as a heliocentric model, we were able to explain how this phenomena occurs. And it's because obviously Earth is closer and moving faster on the orbit around the Sun. Mars is going slower. And because of the speed difference, Earth actually overtakes and laps Mars on its orbit. So every 2.1 years, Earth actually overlaps. And as you overlap because of the difference in speed, Mars appears to move backwards because Earth is going quicker. And the, the apparent motion backwards is as Earth goes past and goes around the Sun and then catches up and then you'll see Mars continue on its normal direct path towards the east from the Earth's perspective. But in real life, if you're on the sun, if you're on the surface of the sun, and you're looking at Earth and Mars from the sun's perspective, Mars is just going on a slower direct route towards the east on its revolution orbit around the sun where you are and Earth just goes quicker. So you wouldn't see that, that retrograde motion from the sun only from Earth. Now, if you're on, the, you're on Mars, looking at Earth, Earth is quicker, so we call that a prograde motion. It would actually speed up and jump forward. Whereas if you're on Mars, looking at Jupiter, which is the next planet out, the first gas giant out, away from the Sun, Jupiter would appear to have a retrograde motion if you were on Mars. And if you're on Earth, same thing, but it's harder to see Jupiter from Earth, but it does happen, it's just longer period. So every planet that's further away from the Earth, that goes on a longer distance around the Sun on orbit, would have this retrograde motion, but without a telescope, it's hard to observe this for planets like Neptune and Uranus. But with Jupiter and Saturn, there's such a long period, you can't always tell where it ends, where it starts, this 
retrograde motion. So as a review, Copernican system put in the sun at the center, which is called the heliocentric model, helio means sun, enabled astronomers to take that geocentric model with epicycles from Ptolemy and rearrange it by Copernicus in 1543 to understand how the difference in speed and location between Earth and Mars affected the time it takes around the sun, the revolution, and that explained this retrograde motion that they couldn't explain prior. And that also led, putting the sun in the middle, to other advancements from other astronomers such as Brahe and Kepler and obviously Galileo with the telescopes and Newton with physics and gravity and then further on people like Einstein and Hawking. So this was the basis for not only understanding retrograde motion, which was a baffling phenomena for the last one and a half thousand years of astronomy, but it was the stepping stone for this scientific revolution to develop our understanding of how planets move and the math and physics involved with our solar system. This is the Earth Science Connection. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed the content. Check out more videos on our channel. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you again.